good morning on this Easter Sunday. Christ is risen and we celebrate and here's my Easter sermon, Easter Sunday sermon from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 1 to 5 and 16 to 21. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly tent, if indeed when we have taken it off we will not be found naked. For while we were still in this tent we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that is what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God has made his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Well, we come to Easter Sunday in this um, lockdown, first nationwide lockdown perhaps any of us have ever known. And I wish I could say that I could say something that would comfort you in a way to take away your worries. I wish I had something inside me just to make the struggle less. I wish there was there was something in me that would let you spread your wings from the things that confine you and let you fly free. I don't even know if such thoughts exist within me, to be honest. I find it challenging. We, we are in days where we are witnessing such needless destruction. And I say witnessing because most of us are sat at our homes watching uh, or reading of heroic efforts of countless medical staff and other people who are fighting on the front line of a war that few of us ever expected to, to face. We might have thought of terrorism. We might have stockpiled arms against this, uh, the threat of a certain group of people. We might have thought of an information war, maybe that that would change the way the world was because we're often told that knowledge is king and the British world certainly holds on to an arrogance about itself based on its knowledge of the past and the present to what it thinks the future will be. Yet we are facing a day where our world is being attacked by a virus. And this virus cares nothing for our ideology or our theology, or indeed any isms by which we categorize or divide ourselves. This is a virus that simply has sets of protein markers which tell it what to do and tell it how to override healthy cells. This is a virus that relies on us and inside us, it kills. It's insidious, really. It's insidious in a way that few of us have prepared for. So I feel quite stripped away of normal rationality. I know that this will pass. We, um, we know that so true in so many ways. But I'm just reminded that where we're weak, where we're weak and humble, that we can receive grace from God. And what I see this Easter Sunday is people on a global scale, stage, stage, on a global scale, and in the whole world, being reminded of their mortality. And Easter Sunday is a right pause moment in the cycle of death and of life that helps us to remember that there is hope beyond however death comes to us and however death is thrown at us. Well, we come to what Paul said in, in two.